Yo, welcome to the stream. The crypto influencers are getting flooded. They're flopping and groping. The entire markets are flopping and groping. Go ahead and pour into the stream. We're gonna take a quick peek at the charts, laugh at these crypto influencers, and uh, then we'll call it a day. We'll wrap it up nice and quick. Thanks for joining, guys. It's gonna be a good one. And uh, I love you. I'm gonna do my posts and uh, I'll see you in a little bit. Let me just get my chat going here. Let's see. All right, enjoy the Mike Perry montage while I uh, get set up, guys.
you guys thought the market was gonna dump. But you forgot FG's doing push-ups. Hey, what's good guys, what's good? Whoa, whoa! Yo! How's everyone doing? What's up? What's up? Chris Major, what's up? Good to have you in, man. Good to see you. About to get dumpy? We pumpy or we dumpy? How we feeling in the chat? Tell me how you're feeling in the chat. James, dude, good job on the long scalps, man. Good job, I saw that. Man, Dubai's been flooded, bro. We got a bunch of flopping gropers, man. Flopping and groping in Dubai. Look at this shit. What the hell's going on? Dubai has no sewage, you know? Like, if you take a shit in Dubai, they have to, like, unload it with trucks. And if it ever rains in Dubai, it just floods. Look at this. I mean, if you want to live in the desert, um, just live in, like, Phoenix, Arizona. You don't have to go to Dubai and, like, deal with slavery and, and flooding and all this stuff. Look at this. And it's so funny that we have this big crypto event going on. And, uh, obviously the markets are dumping. There's never been a crypto event where the markets don't dump. Crypto events are... <sighs> terrible, man. Have you guys ever been to a Bitcoin conference that you actually had a good time at? Yeah, I saw the jet landing at the airport, man. That was crazy, man. How did it even... How'd they even make the decision to land in that shit? That's crazy. Man. Let's see here. I was like scrolling through Twitter. Look, if you just scroll through crypto, uh, crypto Twitter, crypto Twitter, you'll see, you'll see like just all these Dubai posts from all these influencers, like not having a good time, man. Not having a good time. Markets are dumping. The events is all. The events are all fucked. They're flopping and groping over the, over there, man. Um, CF and I were invited to go, but we didn't we didn't want to go man uh, Make sure you guys follow my Twitter by the way flopping groper at flopping groper I'm still in the gulag. You guys got to save me man. Go ahead and uh, follow me on Twitter man I'm in the gulag man. No one knows I'm real or exist um, Yeah, man Also, we got the BKFC April 27th Mike Perry Make sure you tune into that our boy um let's see okay let's look at let's take a look at the charts take a look at the charts so man a lot of confusion a lot of confusion we're right on the cusp we're right on the cusp of shit like it's it's this is a tough spot guys this is tough because i haven't gotten the macro weekly reading that i like to look for to pull out of, of the markets or, or to reduce my my position or or whatever. I know that a lot of shit coins have already done this. Um, in the stock market, ugh, not looking that great currently. We lost, we lost the the sixty on the weekly on the stock market, and so we're basically just relying on this getting saved. We're basically just praying, right? Holding our wee wees and praying. And the dollar looks like it's it's showing strength, like the money flow, even though it's weak. And even though we are lower than we have been, we're lower than we have been, but it's, it's showing some strength currently that doesn't seem to be slowing down currently. A little bit of divergence on the daily, on the Dixie. What about the S&P? You know, what's crazy is like, we are in this kind of pseudo momentum desert. And so getting a momentum wave down here on the daily, on the S&P, if this can just round out a little bit, if we can just let this fester and mature and we do hold some sort of bottom, it, it could start looking better. But man, it's like it's like it's still too early to tell. The, like the panic has only, the markets have only just begun to explore the panic. 
And so it's, it's really too late to say. And so we're in this like really precarious spot. I mean, look at Bitcoin. It's like there's there's two insane realities before us here. There's the rollover capitulation because we lack so much structure from this flagpole that, that we got. But then if we can actually get a bounce here, if we can actually get like these planning time frames to actually do something like this four hour kind of like soft bullish div or like if you count this, if you if you eliminate that wick from the equation, you've got a textbook four hour bull div here, you know, and so like, ugh, you know, I, I hate this man. I hate that I didn't get the clean, the clean sign of weakness yet. Um, personally, I hate this shit, man. And I want to know what you guys think, but but the but the reality, the the bullish reality, if something crazy, if if we can pump up out of this bottom, is like, I guess this was just a bull flag, because we are holding these levels despite all this fear and panic. Why are we still at sixty four? The price is still at sixty four k. I don't know what you guys are are smoking. But we're still over the year-to-date anchor, still at 64. Um, but it seems like people are acting like it's already dumped down and it's already capitulating, right? So there's a lot of front running of, of fear. There's so much fear. Warren Buffett has that phrase. He says, uh, be greedy when others are fearful and be fearful when others are greedy. And so up here, everyone was greedy. In fact, actually, when we were at this level before, when we were at this point, right, we were at the same price back at the start of March, and we were greedy. But now we're at the same level, and now we're fearful. That's so funny, man. That's so funny. How's the chat doing? JE says, if you shit in Dubai, it goes into a turban. No. Uh... I think so. Oh damn, this Dubai shit's been playing the whole time. Yeah, man, if you poop in, in Dubai, uh, they have to pump it out with trucks. They got like trucks attached to the buildings or something and like, they just gotta like carry all that poop out. Let's see. GoldenEye says, what's up, brother? What's up, brother? Good to, good to have you in, man. DTB says, just trade the range, no reason to panic. S&P only has 5% more to go to be a normal drop. I'm kind of in the same boat as you, man. I think that for people to succumb to this, to the propaganda like this, I mean, it could certainly lead to, like, like, like I, I, I can't pretend to fathom the size of, of the amount of fear that this news could uh, could could place on the markets, right? But also, I know that the the S and P is in an everything bubble, and it's in a gigantic bull market uptrend, and so it's kind of par for the course for us to just come down and and just break. You know, like we we constantly are breaking uptrends and then being rebought, and it's not like it's the end of the world, you know. And so like. Personally, I'm, I'm erring on the side of, of not buying into the fear of being greedy when others are fearful. That's kind of how I'm leaning. You, got, you guys want to know what Flopping Groper thinks, right? Like, what Flopping Groper thinks is, is there's a lot of fear right now, a lot of FUD. Uh, and I don't want to buy it, you know? Um, but what MC is saying is that there definitely are some concerning signs. Like, even though the daily uh, on, on Bitcoin looks like it could, something could be happening, the... the Yellow oscillator is actually heading towards zero again. Um, and and we, there's like a wave here that could turn up for us in a momentum desert. So this could end up being a great buying opportunity. But we also have not really gotten the RSIs haven't cooled down as much as we want to see like back here or back here. Like we didn't get an oversold RSI yet. The money flow is super divergent, but it could diverge for much further and we could still continue up. Um, so. Uh, yeah, and then the weekly like being on the brink of, of destruction like this is very very concerning Very concerning and then also like just the fact that uh, On the macro there's like big there's bigger divergences. There's like 
like all the way across there like the price went higher and the waves kind of the not only is the money flow weaker but the waves are like a little bit weaker um but yeah we still got that momentum over the 60 for the time being it would have been nice if if we could get this cross below uh before some sort of big capitulation in the markets i really hope we do um because this is a, a really important signal for me it's something that got my it's got my got my ass out of the markets at a good time back here um, but we did i did have to deal with a dump it did dump on me when i made that call for myself i do remember that and then my brother was like long eight million dollars after and i felt like shit. but then i was right um so when i get that signal of the weekly crossing below you guys will know because um i'll be here Yeah, right now it's like we just kind of want to trade the range, right? That would have paid off back here. When we wick down to that year to date volume weighted anchor territory there. Uh, let's check the the FG anchors here. Okay, so we found some support on the poop line. We're still on that poop line, which is good to see because we didn't get structure on that on that poop line since way back here. And so yes, the, the overall up only uptrend sentiment of the poop line is being tested, um, but it's not resistance. Um, right now it's, it's looking like it wants to reclaim the push up line, but these things are resistance. So there's a, a long ways to go before we reclaim our overall bullish stance. But uh, man, it's like, for us to get this like, we didn't even hit the year to date. It's it's kind of bullish that we don't even hit it. We just kind of wick down there like, like boop, you know, get, get that by. And then up from there, back to the top of the range. And the overall pattern, what you can do is like, you take uh, the resistances here, you copy that, and you drag that down and you do have a pretty clean like bull flag here there's actually a bull flag this is this is like a setup that like i wouldn't actually want to ignore um call it cheesy if you like H hate on it if you like but it looks like a bull flag to me and i know that everyone's seeing the triangle everyone like was looking at that triangle and then the triangle broke down that's the perfect letdown to usher in the fear and then have the you have the year to date buying opportunity which mirrors the buying opportunity that we had after the etf dump off the previous quarter's anchor uh the q4 of 2023 this anchor we thought we were running from it but after the etf we quickly came down and, and accumulated down there and then shot up and so if we're just going to repeat that narrative again then we would get our new quarter we get q2 we dump down to the previous quarter's anchor and then we shoot up not to mention stocks in general benefit from war um i, I get that a lot of people are bearish right now my brother was just shorting but uh I'm kind of erring on the side of, of hope just because I, I like people are saying that the majority is saying to buy the dip. That's not what I'm seeing. The majority I'm, I'm seeing is like fear and FUD and these major influencers, influencers who like back here when we were at these same levels, they were saying that we were going straight to 100K or like they were just frothing at the mouth. Like the pride and the greed was, was at its most. And here we are again at the same level, and yet fear is, is at a maximum. I, I see potential in this. I actually see potential in the fear. In fact, the S&P itself is actually uh, bouncing or trying to bounce. We, we Look, on the four hour, we're getting like a deep 
anchor wave in a momentum desert uh off of the year to date <laughs> off the year to date the crowd feels bearish doesn't it i mean it's i get it's, it like seems like too good to be true but, but other people aren't using anchored view apps like we are you know um i'm not responsible if this market pumps or dumps obviously like i you know you guys got i'm sorry if this shit rolls over but i will come out and say what i think you know i'm i'm actually rather bullish at the at these levels because i feel like this is a good valuation this is a objectively good value stocks and good value bitcoin from a year to date perspective maybe there's a bigger bigger picture that i'm not seeing maybe there's some you know multi-year crazy shit that's going down that fg is is not paying attention to and i may miss that um and so you may have to you know like watch other people absorb as much information as you can on these markets um but i'll give you my perspective i'll give you my read of the anchors which may be right or wrong right i'm just i'm just the messenger of these indicators that i know that uh institutions do utilize i know they use utilize vwap uh clay the great says what's your thoughts on the three uh three week red dots it definitely certainly looks it certainly looks not only overall divergent clay but but we're over the 60 line this is this is what's like when you're over the 60 line it could simply just keep pumping like we're, we're prone to knives to the upside when the momentum is high like this it's like going long you know if, if, if we were like way down here and you just got like a red dot all the way down here at like negative 80 on the blue wave and you're saying we have to go up from here that's not true it, it does not have to go up until at like maybe like when once we recover over the negative 60 line then i would start thinking okay like i'd be a little more up only but even still i would be waiting for that's just the anchor wave right there's a whole nother like trigger wave to that long you know and so maybe this is an anchor wave to a move down um but then it would then it would go it would still go higher until we get actual uh a smaller bearish divergence on this three week time frame that's my read on that and also within this sing singular wave itself we could see more uptrend despite the red dot um for instance right here on uh march of 21 we got this red dot and then there was like another green three weeks and then it went to shit. <laughs> so yeah man i'm uh that's my take on the on the three week red dots like I, we've had messed up macro mixed macro signs on these weekly charts for a while i've been holding my wee wee through these streams like every every day with you guys man every day um but i maintain a stance that when the blue waves are over the 60 line it's tough to fully count the bulls out you know um because we're just not in that ranging momentum period we're in like throbbing plus 60 momentum mm. trader geo boy my boy trader geo man guys gano alex man good to see you guys in you guys see these dubai nerds getting uh man can i find them oh man Dude, I, if you just scroll through Twitter, you see like people getting flooded. Look at this shit. <laughs> oh man, dude, look at all these influencers getting wrecked, man. They're getting literally liquidated, literally. This is good for the markets. Remember I was like saying on a CF stream the other day, like if Richard Hart just accepted, if he just like let us tar and feather him IRL, then like Pulse Chain would, would pump. Like the world loves to see, I feel like the markets love to see crypto influencers getting clowned on. And this is like the most exciting crypto event that we've ever had. We have like Rolls Royces getting flooded. 
p pool parties of, of sludge shit, Dubai shit water. All these people, like, instead of going to Phoenix, Arizona and just hiking on some mountains, they got to go to Dubai where they got slavery. Look at this shit. Look, they took profits too early. They took their profits and look, now their profits are flooded. Who's Venusa, dude? Who is Venusa? I don't know her. But, uh, yeah, Crypto Wendy was like, Crypto Wendy's flooded in. They're all flooded in, man. <sighs> yeah, I keep, you know, I keep getting all these, uh, like, Crypto Girls on my Twitter feed. They just pop up. And, uh, I wonder, do they have boyfriends and shit? Like... If they had a boyfriend, I would never want to be any of their boyfriends because, like, the moment any of their neckbeard following see that they have a boyfriend, like, it's GG. Like, it's over for their career at that point. Absolutely over. So you're basically just, like, a giant burden in this in this woman's life. You're, you're a, a damper on her ambition. We, I can't, I could never be with someone like that, dude. But, uh, man, yeah, so the, these guys are all flooding in. Damn, look at this shit. Holy shit. I actually think this is good for the markets. See, now that we can see them actually getting liquidated, that satisfies the, the thirst for blood. It's almost like the markets can ease up a bit because justice is being served. We would rather justice be served IRL to the people who deserve it than all of us suffering. Um, I'm not even sure. I'm not sure what the rain. I guess it rained there. And uh, this is typical of desert cities such as uh, Phoenix, Arizona or Dubai. Like drainage is like the last thing you think of during a rain or uh, during city planning and stuff. So. I want to see the footage of the plane. Is this fake news? Streamer Neon dead? This has to be fake. This isn't real. What the hell? No, this is not real. That's fake news, dude. Everyone's like joking and laughing. There's no way that's real, dude. Twitter's so weird, bro. I can't even like tell. There's so much fake. How is there so many bots and like, that was just a post of someone dying. And everyone was like, like, what the hell was that? Oh, here's the video. Here's the airplane. Damn. For some reason, it's evoking the memories of the Afghanistan withdrawal. With like those uh, people dangling off the airplanes. That's kind of what that reminds me of. They all call each other Habibi there. They say Habibi. We are flooding. We are dying. Help us, Habibi. Look at this guy. Me, Habibi. Me Habibi is at least he's making the best of the the floods going on there Alex of crypto you tell no no about the floods. What does no no say about the the great flood? This is biblical actually that's biblical <laughs> Dude imagine spending all that money to to, to stay there and you got to deal with that shit How's that for a crypto event? Cloud seeding, VJ. Good one, man, they're cloud seeding. You know that's not clean water either, Alex O Crypto. Oh, yeah, that's some Dubai sewage, man. That's gross, man. And some Burge Slurge Khalifa, man. They got the Slurge Khalifa flowing.
Oh yeah, they're Gucci goggles. Oh yeah, they're looking at life with brown tinted goggles now, man. Chase Hughes, good to have you back, man. Good to have you back. We're just laughing at these uh, crypto influencers. What is it? Here it is again. This like neon pronounced dead. He's not dead. Look at him. There's no way this guy's dead. <laughs> <coughs> Dang, look at this shit. Oh my gosh. You, I wonder if any of them checked the weather before they came out, man. Are there deaths? There has to be deaths in this. Oh my gosh. Wait. Yeah. The death toll from separate heavy flooding in neighboring Oh my, oh, so there was some neighboring town. 18 people died over this shit, dude. That's the shit they don't tell you. All these influencer, influencers are like, hoo -hoo, I'm in the rain. It's so memorable. Look at this funny experience. But no, like, people are dying in that shit. This is real shit. Oh my God, dude, it looks like they're in the ocean. This looks like they're just in the middle of the ocean right now, man. Oh my gosh. Well, um, you know, let's say a little prayer for uh, those who perish and, and just, I hope that everyone gets out safe and, uh, you know, as goofy as it is, this is a really serious thing. And so, man, um, yeah, just, just keep the whole situation in your prayers. Some of it's funny, but a lot of it is, uh, serious. Um, yeah, honestly, I am still, I am still long, James. I haven't capitulated any of my bags. In fact, I told you guys I bought some Bitcoin on that wick there. When it fell below the poop line, um, it like punctured down. And as it was coming back up, I just scoop, I scooped up some Bitcoin, man. I, I couldn't, because what I saw was the potential that we actually just spiked right back up to the top of the range because I, I've learned to trust the anchored VWAPs. And this purple line, um, if I'm a man of my word, you know, throughout this whole top pattern here this whole uh bull flag area i've been saying like if we ever came down to the year to date i believe it would be like a good value it's like objectively some maybe not cheap but it's no longer expensive bitcoin it's probably like what bitcoin should be right and so finally like I, 58k is probably what bitcoin should be priced at and so we got to that point and i scooped some up And uh, so far, I'm not regretting my decision, despite all the FUD and all the fear and all the doubt, the fear, uncertainty and doubt and the war bullshit. We're at 64K right now. Mad love to you, Alex o Crypto. Thanks for joining, man. Um, so on the four hour, I do see what I would consider, I guess, like a soft bull div. Just because if you ignore this wick here and you only count the four hour bodies, it's a very strong bullish div. I just wish we got a deeper RSI and uh, the money flow could potentially be in a better position. It does kind of look like it's about to cross zero. So it, it could be better. Um, the six hour, we're seeing that same kind of signal just smashed into a single wave. RSIs are kind of aiming up, but they're not coming from that low point that we want to see. We, we, we wished that they were below 12. And so, you know, I actually want this to kind of, I, I almost would love this to dump back down and just fish around in the anchor area. Like just, you know, flop around and grope around in the 58K area and really test the RSI, push the RSI down 
under the 12 get a, like a perhaps a trigger wave to this six hour anchor wave um or perhaps we even just like come down a little bit lower you know a little below the year to date um and it would still we would be coiling up something something juicy there but right now as, as long as we remain over the year to date and we remain in this uh bullish flag pattern you can't count the bulls out, man. Especially with so much FUD. But yeah, you guys see what I mean? Like, it could definitely build more of a base, for sure. Yeah, that's Dave Hagen. Don't be surprised if uh, it wants to dig out more, more base. It's not based enough, man. So we look at ETH BTC, and ETH is still struggling. ETH is just rejecting, once again off of our Q2 anchor, plummeting down. Still not the time for alts and for ETH. Um, but, you know, if the ETH ETF comes out and the narrative shifts, like, man, this is going to, I have a feeling like ETH can seriously rip hard. Alts can, alts can go crazy. It's just not yet, not yet, not yet. Bitcoin dominance. We did have like a top out on the eight hour. Let's check a bigger time frame here. Over the 60 on the daily, RSI is really high. Got big market strength. Even on the weekly, money flow is uh, increasing. RSI is kind of getting up there, tightening up, getting a wave over the 60 line. Yeah, it looks like it looks like it's trying to get up there to that golden retrace. Maybe it's got a little more juice left in it, guys. Maybe it's got a little more juice. Um, OG blockchain says, "How do I get the purple line on my chart?" Good question, man. That's our year-to-date anchor, but it's also the Q1 anchor of 2024, and it's also the January anchor. So it's all of those things just left to continue forward to to infinity. Um, but you're gonna go to the daily chart, click your drawing tools, click the anchored VWAP, and you go all the way to January 1st, slap an anchor on that shit, and that's your year to date VWAP. But it's also the Q1. Um, I'll do a quick quarterly analysis of uh, Bitcoin here. So we'll go over to our copy chart. Okay, I'm gonna keep that flag pattern up, and uh, my God, if that the I don't even know how you calculate the target for a flag. I'm pretty sure you just take the the pole and add it on there, but that looks retarded. Don't, <laughs> that looks really retarded. I hope Geo's not watching, man, because Geo's gonna think I'm a, I'm a retard. But uh, yeah, that was from earlier today. I was just like, yo, what the hell, man? Um, but yeah, so we'll do a quarter, a quick quarterly analysis. So you go to the three month and because a quarter is every three months. Get your anchor tool. Get your little uh, magnum is not needed. But yeah, you just one, two, three, four, five. I'll do the last five because I want to demonstrate that, um, or wait a second here. Sorry, sorry. It's just gonna be the last three quarters. Okay. The last three quarters. So first of all, we had the Q4 of 2023. We got a test on that right after the start of Q1 2024, and we continued up. And so now here we are in the next quarter, and very quickly we have a repeat scenario. Look, it's a repeat. We had a quick test of the previous quarter, and it's suggesting that we have a continuation up just purely based on the quarterly anchored VWAP sentiments. Now, is there a guarantee whatsoever that that we have to hold the previous quarter's anchor? No, it's just that if these markets are super bullish, that's precisely what we want to see. We want to see a leapfrogging from one quarter to the next. One, we don't, we don't wanna go into a new quarter without first testing, giving a little kiss, mwah. How you doing, baby? 
just to that previous quarter just to say like I recognize you bro you know it's almost like gratitude it's like saying that we appreciate how far we've come you know like for so for Bitcoin to pump all the way up here with this ETF hype we love that but for us to, to skip the previous quarter get some traction there would be a, a huge disservice to the market and so I'm, I'm, I'm getting that vibe here again I'm getting that vibe here that this is just a service uh, to the health to, to a healthy market we, we want to have a healthy market we don't just want to pump all the way up to infinity that's bad for everyone involved less time for the common man to get in less time for the institutions to get in and uh, just a, a more unhealthy chart it's just not a healthy chart and so what we got here was healthy and beautiful and good and, and this is not bad this is not evil this is not satan this is this is jesus this is a blessing for us to get some good structure on the previous quarter's anchor. And if things turn up, this may in hindsight be the moment, um, but I'm not gonna count my chickens before they hatch, even though I did buy some Bitcoin on this wick. Um, I fully recognize that we could dredge out um, and we could even, you know, it could be a different scenario from, from what happened over here. We could have to use this as a steady guide and actually snake around and perhaps even retest this same anchor the q4 of 2023 we may have to come down to that anchor in a worse in a you know like a, in a bad scenario bad scenario but uh just letting you guys know like you know where the anchors are at quarterly anchors ain't no joke man Gio, I was watching your stream earlier, man. I love your work, man. Just uh, blazing through the charts. Offering consistent positions to your community. Uh, playing both sides like a G. I love it, man. Um, and you're you're really on these like small time frames, bro. You're really murdered on these small time frames. <clears throat> I could definitely like come in here on these small time frames and like do some anchor work like uh like i could put an anchor on this wick here and that's the the idea that we want to dump right if we're going to dump then we need to be below this line and if we want to pump then we want to be over that volume weighted sentiment so looks like we're trying to climb over it nothing uh nothing consistent yet uh, in fact, we could get bearish kind of at this very moment. Um, but if we can get some traction on this, we might find a surge up. So we're kind of right on the line from a volume weighted standpoint, just measuring this gnarly wick that we got. It's acting as that steady guide currently. So it will pick a side. Eventually it's going to pick a side and it's gonna be humiliating. Whatever side it picks, there's gonna be people getting humiliated. So protect your ass, protect your booty hole. Make sure you're not one of these people getting humiliated. Make sure you're looking at the markets from the perspective of an observer. Be like Geo, where you're willing to play both sides. But you gotta be the eagle. You gotta be soaring overhead. You can't be in the thick of shit. You can't be a little weasel running through the bushes afraid of predators. You can't be a freaking beaver, man. Don't be one of these Dubai beaver people. You see a body of water and you say, I don't, I, I can't tolerate this. That's what beavers do. They, they are like prejudiced against flowing bodies of water. <clears throat> Man, this week is gonna be really, really telling. I know that's like so cliche. That's the most cliche shit, but the year to date anchor test is the biggest moment in the market of the quarter. That's like basically like where we're at is right here, right? Like this is the moment in the previous quarter where you really needed to be paying attention. That was the opportunity. And so I, I believe that's where we're at here is like, this is the make or break opportunity. This is the, what separates the wheat from the shaft, the men from the boys the paper hands from the diamond hands. 
Um, in the in the real men, yeah, the real men from the boys. So yeah, are you an eagle or are you a beaver? That's basically what's going on here. <laughs> um, and yeah, so no matter what, I'm still gonna do 100 push-ups a day. I ain't no beaver, man. Even if, uh, in fact, it's better for Nick Cipher if we don't. Obviously, if we just pump straight to the moon, you know, it makes Market Cipher look good and, and oh, I was right. Oh, I was right or whatever. Even though like, all I did was say, I'm just gonna do 100 push-ups until it gets to 100K. I didn't say, I think it's going to 100K. I didn't tell anyone to buy it and FOMO into it because it is going there. All I've done is educate people and just say, you know, I'm gonna do push-ups. I'm just doing 100 push-ups a day with extra steps, basically is what I'm saying. This is more about me doing push-ups and getting strong than it is about whatever the hell Bitcoin is doing. Um, and so, yeah, if I do push-ups for the next year or whatever, then good. That's just like a, a standard, normal calisthen calisthenics journey. There's other dudes on YouTube who, who go on similar journeys just with less drama around it. And uh, it's really not a big deal to do 100 push-ups a day. But for a bunch of crypto pencil neck dweeb geeks, 100 push-ups a day is like going to prison or some shit. So it seems more intense than it really is, but honestly, busting out 100 push-ups a day, it feels easy now. That's why I'm always trying to mix it up and like do some ring push-ups or like some decline push-ups or something because 100 is nothing, man. What's annoying is filming it, but I gotta post the proof of work. It's the proof of work contest. The, the, the point of the challenge is to build consistency with my short game, hit multiple birds with one stone, and show the proof. Because I could easily sit and tell you that I do 100 push-ups a day, but would you believe me? No, dude. Just like if I told you I made a million dollars, would you believe me? No. I'd have to post the freaking profit. So yeah, man, no days off, no days off. We're gonna do a little having giveaway too on the day of the having. I'll do a stream and we'll do a giveaway. Do a little social media flop and grope fast and we'll do a giveaway. But uh, that's where I'm at with the markets. Gonna keep it simple today. Um, I'm gonna be continuing to watch this. We see some bullish divergence on the planning timeframes, right? Despite the big time frame is looking gnarly on the brink, on the cusp of destruction, annihilation on the weekly. The S&P aiming down. The Dixie not quite showing any signs of slowing down. That being said, uh, Bitcoin is clinging to life on what appears to be a bull flag on the previous quarter's anchor. And so we got to continue to watch this. It's a flop and grope fest for the markets. Um, I hope that you guys value my perspective. And uh, also just remember tonight, do a little prayer for these people in Dubai suffering. Um, almost 20 people have lost their lives. And so even though it's funny to see our, these influencers who were shilling and pumping and dumping on us, getting clowned on by mother nature, just remember that uh, it's real people. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's some real shit going on there. Um, so, yeah, I'll be praying for you guys, too. I know, um, you know, whether we like to admit it or not, a lot of us are probably overinvested in this shit. And so I'm going to pray for you guys and uh, make sure you're looking after yourselves. And um, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. So thank you.